Good morning, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I just wanted to make you another video. Um, this one is going to be on a diabetes data set with SK Learn because I'm going through all of the data sets in SK Learn to show them to you, show you how they work. Um, what I did was I wrote my data set, on, I wrote the program on Google Colab, and then after I wrote the program on Google Colab, I saved it to my GitHub repository. I'm going to do a blog post on this video, and when I do the blog post, I will give you a link to the code. So if you want to get the code, then you need to read the blog post. The data set that I'm using is called a toy data set. I'm not sure exactly why SK Learn calls them toy data sets. I think it's because there's something that you can play with, but I'm not entirely happy with it. The two previous data sets that I worked with, I was able to actually find the data sets on the internet and use the data sets that I found on the internet. I was not able to find a data, diabetes data set so I'm using the diabetes data set that is actually in SK Learn. So we're going to go through that. One of the things about um, Google Cochlab that I found out is Google Cochlab does not have the most current version of SK Learn installed on it. I did actually send them a message asking them to install it, which I don't think they have. Um, the most current version of SK Learn is a uh, 24.1, and what I did was I had to actually install the most current version on Google Colab program that I was actually working on because Google Colab itself is working on version 22. Now, what's on version 24, which is the most current version, is um, a parameter called at data frame, I think is at frame, at frame, or it, it's a frame, it's a frame one. And um, that particular parameter allows you to take the toy data set and convert it to an actual data frame. So I went ahead and installed the most recent version of SK Learn on it and tried to use that on data frame and I just couldn't get any joy out of it. So because of that I didn't use it. So what I did was I decided to work around it and as a result of working around it I'm going to go through the code review where I was working around it. Let me just look, you can't see what I'm doing but um, when you go to the low diabetes it says as frame, that was the parameter as frame and that parameter was in the version number 23 and it's not on version number 22 and what Go Google Colab is using is version number 22 and so as a result of that I couldn't get the as frame function unless I upload unless I installed the most current version but when I did install the most current version and use the S frame parameter, it still wasn't what I wanted, so I decided not to use it. So now, without further ado, now that we've got the introduction sorted out, then what we'll do is we'll actually go through the real um, code review. So this diabetes data set that we're using it's the 10 baseline variables of age, sex, body mass index, average blood pressure. Six blood serum measurements were obtained for each of N equals 442 diabetes patients, as well as the response of interest, 
a quantitative measurement of disease progression one year after baseline. So this is your diabetes status set. And what I did was I, in the remarks, I put in what the different uh, columns were because the columns that you get on uh, the columns that you get on the data frame, they just say one to ten, and they don't tell you what they are. So I went ahead and labeled them. So now that you know about this diabetes data set, what we did was we imported the libraries, we imported pandas, numpy, matplotlib, seaborn, sklearn. I wanted to see the most current version of sklearn, and because I had previously installed sklearn. It was version 0.24.1. But if I hadn't installed the most current version of sklearn, it would have been 0.22. Then we load the file. We're loading the file directly from sklearn. So it's from sklearn.datasets import load datasets. So xy equals load diabetes return xy equals true. So return x, y can be true or false, but I made it true in this instance. Check out S shape. It's 442 rows of data with 20 with 10 columns. And Y shape, it's 442 rows of data. So you can check out X, it's just an array. And you can check out Y, it's just an array as well. So since X and Y are just arrays, what we have to do in order to work with this, we have to create a data frame. And this is what I did. If you go onto the actual sklearn uh, information, they just use the X and the Y. But because I wanted to work with the data frame and I wanted to do a little bit of analysis, I had to create a data frame. So DF1 equals PD data frame X. And then I named the columns. So now we've got the data frame with 10 columns. DF2 equals PD data frame Y, which is your target. And then I named the column disease progression. And so what I had to do was I had to merge DF1 and DF2. So DF equals PD merge DF1, DF2. Left index equals true, right index equals true. That's the only way I could get it to merge. So that's the code to get it to merge. Now we check DF info. All of the columns are float columns. So that's good because um, that that's good because you know obviously you don't have to do any encoding if all of the columns are float columns. So this is DF describes, so these are your statistics. But unfortunately, what they have done in the Toyo data set is they have um, normalized the data already. And if you actually go on to Toy data sets for SKLearn, I'll read that to you where it says low diabetes. And it says right here, it says, um, no, it's not on that page. Hold on a second. I know you can't see this because you can only see one page. But we'll go to the diabetes data set. It says each of the 10 feature variables have been mean-centered and scaled by the standard deviation times in samples. The sum of squares, each column totals 1. So what they did was they um, what they, what they did was they they already normalized it. They standardized the data, and because they standardized the data, it doesn't really mean a whole lot to you. And I did actually spend a lot of time last night trying to unstandardize the data. But unfortunately, I don't know enough to unstandardize the data. I went on to Stack Overflow and I tried to get some formulas on Stack, Stack Overflow on how to unstandardize the data. But you, if you standardize, if you use SKLearn's 
standard scalar, then you can reverse the standard scalar. But this has just been standardized before they even made it out and put it as a data set. So I don't know how to unstandardize it. I'm sure that there is a formula that you can use to take the values back to their original values, but I don't know what the formula is. I could go on to Stack Overflow and ask Stack Overflow from the formula, but from what I gather, they said that if you don't have the formula that they use to standardize it, it's going to be really difficult to unstandardize it. So if you've got the formula they use to standardize it, then you can just reverse that formula. But then you have to know math, and I haven't studied mathematics for 40 years, so I'd have to study some math as well. So just to make a long story short, this describe doesn't mean a whole lot for this data set because this data set has been standardized before it even got to me, the user. But one thing that I did do was I checked for null characters and there were not any null characters and I produced a heat map. So I produced a heat map so you can compare the independent variables against the variables, against the dependent variables. So your dependent variable is your target, which is the disease progression. And then I made a chart of the disease progression. So you can see how the disease has progressed. And then what I did was I defined the X and the Y. So your X is your, your independent variables. So what you do is you just, it's the DF, the data frame, but you drop the disease progression. And your Y is your disease progression. So this is your X, but it's all standardized, so it, or, so it doesn't mean much. And this is your Y. So what we've done now is we're going to use train test split to split the X variable up into training and validating data sets, and that's what we've done. And then we define our model. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a voting regressor. And so because we're going to use a voting regressor, we're going to use gradient boosting regressor random forest regressor, linear regressor, and a voting regressor. So model one is your gradient boosting regressor. And I used, uh, I tuned the parameters to get 100% accuracy on that. And I got an RMS, that's a root mean squared of 6382. And here's a diagram of your RMS. So you can see it's not very good. All of the plots are not very close to the actual values. And I made another diagram of the RMS and it doesn't look very good either, but I thought that I would show that to you. Now model, model number two is your random forest regressor. I was able to get about a 93% accuracy when I tuned the parameters. On RMS, we've got a 4173, which is a little bit better than the previous one. And what we're dealing with is the RMSs. And so you can see that the blue line is the actual values and the red dots are the predictions. And so the predictions are away from the blue line, but they're a little bit better than the previous prediction. Here's another plot. You can see it doesn't look very good. Can't make much out of it. Linear regression is uh, model number three. We got uh, about a 53% accuracy on when we predicted on the validation set. And we've got an RMS of 3319. So again, that is better than the previous RMSs that we had. And so we've got another chart which looks a little bit better than the previous chart and I made another diagram and you can see it doesn't look very good does it so now we're going to use the voting regressor which has a 90% accuracy and you have a RMS of 4209 and here's the uh, graph that we plotted with your RMS so the voting regressor is actually 
supposed to be better than the three um better than the three models combined but obviously in this case it isn't better than the three models combined and basically what has happened is I think that the linear regression gives you the least error because linear regression is 3319 so in this particular instance you should be using linear regression but I think that concludes it for this video it's a little bit difficult for me to make because I didn't get to do all of the things that I wanted to do and because I didn't get to do all of the things that I wanted to do um, it's not really satisfactory for me but at least it gives you an opportunity to see how you can actually use the diabetes data set that's actually in the SKLearn library and um, so you can play around with that a bit and I guess that's why they call it a toy data set because it lets you play around with it. So I'm going to conclude this video for the time being. If you like my video please like, subscribe and share. Um, if you want to receive a notification whenever I make a video please tap on the bell button and whenever I make a video you'll be notified. And if you like the work I do and you want to support me then uh, I've got my email address to my PayPal account in the description box down below. So again, thank you so much for watching my videos and I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.